Hi guys, I'm Stefan from WP Explainer. Today I want to look at MailChimp segmentation, more specifically groups versus tags. What are the key differences and how can you use both to target your newsletters more specifically to your subscribers? So uh, let's jump in and have a look. Let's start by having a look at MailChimp tags. This is a simple way of keeping your subscribers organized to any way you see fit without them knowing about it. You could, for example, add a tag to a new list you're importing to remember where they came from. You can import a list under Audience, All Contacts, Add Contacts and Import Contacts. Adding a tag to imported subscribers is done very easily by selecting a tag just after uploading your list. Then you can view and sort your subscribers with your new tag. With your subscribers tagged, it's very easy to send out newsletters to these specific subscribers. Groups, on the other hand, gives your subscribers a way to select what they're interested in. So groups are shown on your sign-up forms, whereas tags are hidden for your eyes only. Groups are also visible on the Update Preferences page, which usually is linked to in your newsletter footer. You can change the look of the Update Preferences page by going to Sign-up Forms, Form Builder, and then selecting Update Profile Form in the drop-down. If you don't have a Update Preferences link in your newsletter footer, you can use this shortcode to add it. You can also find the shortcode below this video. Let's go back to the form builder where I'll show you the different ways you can create groups. The most standard way is using checkboxes, which makes it possible for the subscriber to select any number of topics that he or she is interested in. But if you want to force your subscribers to choose only one subject, then you can use either radio buttons or a drop down. This is clever if you, for example, are a university and are sending out specific newsletters to staff, faculty and students. It's important to note that if you already have a sign up form on your website, then it will not automatically add the groups to that form. So after adding groups, you have to upload a new form to your site. How to do this depends on what tool you use to add your sign-up form. If you're using the simplest way with an embed code, then you simply need to add the new embed code to your website. So after adding your group in the form builder, go to sign-up forms, embedded forms, and copy the code from there to your website. Now your subscribers can choose a group when they sign up to your newsletter. If you, for example, are using a plugin in WordPress, it's not guaranteed to work with groups, but you should be able to figure that out by looking at the plugin settings or documentation. If you're using Gravity Forms, then it's quite easy to add groups. I will make a tutorial about that and add a link to it in the top right corner. Last but not least, Let's have a look at how to let your existing subscribers know that they now have the option to select the topic for your newsletter. This is quite simple. We will create a new newsletter and describe the new options and then insert a nice big button. In the button link, we will choose website and insert the merge tag for the update preferences page. Now they will hopefully select the topic and you will be able to send out more specific newsletters to your current subscribers. Because some might miss the newsletter or fail to see the button, then I recommend you keep the button in the next three newsletters. You can place the button and info near the bottom of your newsletter. If you've already tagged some of your subscribers, then you can easily add these tagged subscribers to a group manually. Simply go to Audience, All Contacts, then filter for the tag, mark all, and finally add them to the group. Last but not least, I suggest making an email template for each group. 
This is just a smart way to ease your workflow and save time every time you create a new newsletter for each of your groups. You can do that by going to Campaigns, Email Templates, and then replicate your existing template and adjust it as needed. That's it for this video. Remember to check out my website for a full MailChimp for Beginners online course. It's free, so why not check it out? And uh, if you found this video useful, please leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing for this channel for more content like this. See you guys next time.